All right, welcome back. We are on the very final lap of our conversation this morning, and the focus will be on the Naira redesign policy uh, we are asking the way forward. It is no longer news that the central bank had instructed orders that the old 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes uh, remains legal tender to run side by side with the new with the new uh, Naira notes. So these no doubt has raised some concerns. Uh, Nigerians have been plunged into uh, some level of poverty and suffering for the last few 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 weeks or months. On the show, we are speaking with um, Adewali Adebayo, presidential candidate, uh, Social Democratic Party uh, SDP. We're looking at the concerns uh, that the Naira redesign policy has thrown out. The way forward. So good to have you on the program, um, uh, Mr. Adebayo. It's a pleasure. Good to see you. Yes, yeah, good to see you again. Uh, so tell us exactly what you you could make from all the drama that have played out in the last few few weeks around the Naira redesign policy. What can you make of it? Well, what I can make of it is um, lack of understanding all around. Even from your question and intro, where you call it a policy, it's not a policy. It's an exercise. And it has turned out to be an exercise in futility. Because a policy will have a policy document. There will be some blueprint somewhere or a white paper somewhere, something that will show, okay, this is the reason why we are doing this. How long is it going to take? This is the expected um, outcome of it. And all stakeholders will be identified and their contributions and will be reflected and then it will be gazetted by appropriate authority. This will be just an off the cuff exercise that uh, they, they did. So that is an error and that's why we are all talking about cross purposes. The closest you can get to rationale was the uh, express comments given by the government central bank who said that um, there were three reasons why they wanted to do it. One, that's after they already enacted the idea. One was that um, some of the, the, the money is being used by criminals uh, to pay ransom, kidnapping, ransom, money laundering, all sorts of things like that. Uh, second was that the too much money outside the banking uh, sector, outside the banking board, a lot of it money they, they couldn't trace their money. The central bank issued Naira and the Naira doesn't return to the banks. Naira is somewhere in cellars and silos or outside. Uh, thirdly, that a lot of the currency notes had expired and had outlived their shelf life. So those three things don't get cured by changing the color of money. So because you want to change the color of money, the same money will go back to the same sector where, it came, where the original one came from. So if you collected 10,000 from me, you give me 10,000 in return. So, but the practical effect or realization of that exercise did not address those three core issues that the central bank, and when I read the letter that the governor of central bank wrote out, they were talking now again about the effect of it on the, on the election, which is the least intelligent of all the reasons because you hold elections all the time. Uh, every four years we hold elections and every year or so we have an off-season government election somewhere. So are you going to be changing the color of your money uh, every year half a, a chameleon or a naira? So it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, second reason is that they want to go cashless. So to go cashless, you cannot force people to go cashless by uh, formalizing the economy. And as you can see, uh, the, the largest chunk of our economy is the value creation is done in the informal sector. Uh, there's no technology penetration, there's no platform. So all of this is just a confusion. So in the final analysis, we are back to where we should be, where, where we should have been. One, that if you want to change the color of your money, uh, you allow simultaneous sector for a reasonable period of time, and you'll have the bankers committee, you will have told their members, each time somebody brings the old money, don't give him the old money back. So 
the old money and then reissue the new money. But there are three problems arising from this one. The so-called new Nara note is so unintelligently designed that it has no advantage over the old one. It's even worse than the old one. It will not last. It, the color will not, it's not fast enough. The design does not have all the other features which you want to have, clear window, kinogram, other security features to identify the money. So it's a very unintelligent exercise. Second is that the new money is not available to replace the old one. So you can only be confiscating people's money. So what I would recommend to the new government is that just forget about it. Just count your cost. Have a five-year plan to demonetize transactions. You invest in infrastructure, you invest in other things, you give POS to people for free, you try to integrate um, the informal sector into um, e-money, like they did in uh, East Africa. Anywhere you go, if you want to buy anything on the road, in PESA, PESA is used by everybody. You need time. Secondly, this poorly designed money, you should just let it go. Don't print more of it. Uh, properly design the Naira to be more durable, a better ways to do it. And uh, prepare yourself, thirdly, for serious heat of the economy. Because by the time the numbers come in, I can guarantee you we are in the neighborhood of 18 to 20 trillion in losses already. So you try to make sure that you ask for Philip to the economy, you come and have to increase on spending to be able to boost the economy, otherwise you have a serious recession. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Adibayo, for that opening remark there. If you were in the shoes of the CBN governor or President Muhammad Buhari, how would you have um, suggested they go about this change in currency, the currency swap, given the excuses, if I would use that word, that is given uh, for doing this, the, uh, for uh, stopping of uh, ransom, you know, uh, asking of ransom by uh, those who are practicing insecurity in the country, um, vote buying and the likes. How would you have suggested that they go along this narrow swap issue? When President Buhari shoes, Nigeria will not be in this kind of mess. So I will not even do it at all. I will not do this exercise because there are many ways to address the issue of um, ransom. It's law enforcement. It's not money. So it's, you handle law enforcement. Uh, you use intelligence. You also watch the fidelity of law enforcement agents to the law because it is difficult for you to carry out all this kind of criminality without the of law enforcement. So you deal with law enforcement. You don't use law enforcement, you don't use central bank to solve law enforcement problem. You can't be in the front uh, of that. The same thing with vote buying. If the best way to stop vote buying is for the ruling party not to buy votes. And if the ruling party is not buying votes, uh, they can monitor uh, other people who are trying to buy votes. It's a law enforcement issue, so it doesn't arise at all. The central bank is supposed to save the economy even from the government. So I cannot be the central bank governor because it's, uh, it will be the most unfortunate uh, position to be because the central bank governor hasn't been acting, not, not just because of this uh, money swap that has been bushed. It's not been acting like the typical central bank governor. The central bank's job is not to do the bidding of the government of the day. It's not the priority of the government of the central bank to assist uh, the president for any political outcome. That's not his job. His job is to look into the health of the economy, to defend the Naira domestically against inflation, and defend the Naira externally against foreign exchange devaluation, uh, the depreciation, to also uh, ensure that we, our economy has allocated efficiency and that fiscal management by the government, where government spends relative to its income, is so disciplined that the cost of government borrowing money to run deficits is so high that government will always do it as a last resort. And then to manage money supply in such a way that people who have money would want to keep their money in the banking sector. It is difficult for me to keep my money in the bank if the money is going to, first, the bank will charge me a lot of COT for nothing. Second, my money will be losing value. So it's better for me to receive my salary today and go straight to buy a bag of rice that same day. 
that to leave the money in the bank and go and buy the bag of rice is to do it. Because by next week, the bag of rice will have increased uh, in, in, in price. So those are the areas he needs to deal with and to ensure that there's discipline in the financial sector and the banks are not um, gorging on their, uh, on their economy and declaring uh, bogus uh, uh, profits without underlining productivity. Those are the jobs of the central bank government. And when you do that job very well, you will not be the best friend of the president. You will not be so cozy. You won't be taking pictures like this, like father and son, the way they are doing like this. Because if you look at previous governors of central bank, typically, when the central bank governor goes to see the president, the president knows that there's a problem. This person is coming to come and argue with me over one thing or the other. And when the Minister of Finance has put together a, a beautiful plan to spend people's money, one of the last questions will be, would the CPL accept? Would the central bank governor accept this? So, but now they've all colluded together and become uh, one chance, you know, for the economy. So this is, this is what you need to change. If you change that, many of these crises will not be necessary. So can you believe that in Nigeria, we were being chased by matter in, in 2023? Uh, the last time we did that was uh, 200 years ago in Nigeria. We started using Manila, uh, Kauri, all those things to do business. So we are now doing pure butter in 2023. It's a, it's a fiasco. So that needs to change. But the President Buhari is leaving, so there is nothing he can do now. He has to go. Uh, and then the Governor of Central Bank, of course, I believe he will go immediately with him. So it's now the burden is on the President elect to now clear the mess not to make a political sensation out of it, but to find an intelligent way, one, to make sure that this Naira that we, just like we did Polymer and Polymer went away, that this new Naira goes away quietly, nobody talks about it anymore, and then they take their time to design the Naira in a better way. Secondly, to migrate us, uh, maybe sequencing it, like every, set a reasonable target that for the next five years, we go 20% every year more towards e-payment. 20% more, in, so you go gradually towards that. And it means that even the government has to now take the lead by itself, that the government itself will not be doing a lot of uh, run currency operation. If you want to pay money to government account, it's easy. If the government wants to pay you salary, things like that. But you could see that even government agencies, INEC, police, all of them, army, they still need NARA, uh, physical NARA to operate, to run the government. So if you, as a government, still have to use raw cash, to run your operation. So you should imagine a transport company, uh, a church, a mosque, a school, another person who is doing logistic business, another person who is doing uh, other businesses. So you should take that into account. But improved technology would help because everybody who can press a button and send money uh, 1,000 kilometers away will, will rather do it than carry the money and go to ATM and all of that. So it's natural flow is towards e-payment, but you must enable it with technology and not mix things up uh, and down. M M Mr. Adebayo, can you categorically say that uh, the, the Naira Redesign Initiative, you said it's not a policy, but I think it's a policy that probably some assaulted um, a debt. Would you say that this initiative of government does not have any uh, benefits did not achieve anything in its entirety. Can you categorically say that? One, it's not a policy. Because if it's a policy shown in the policy document, uh, there was a TV station that I went to, and they were struggling. They were looking for the policy document. They can't find it. There's no policy document. Every, well, every government policy has a policy document. Because government is not done tradition. So you can't pick your phone and call a uh, Serbian governor. Change the color of money for me. I prefer blue. You know what I prefer green. I prefer yellow. They, they don't run government that way. What how you run government is that you put together the office that is in charge. Usually, it will come from the currency controller, which is the central bank. You write a memo. That currency controller will write a memo. It will have got a memo from director of uh, bills, director of cash, all the other directors under him. Then there will be bankers committee meeting. Then the governor's board. There are five governors in central bank. Who don't know? They think there's only one governor. There's a, there's a board of governors. There are five governors there. The governor of Central Bank and the deputy governor. They are the people who run the bank. Then they will now reach Minister of Finance. Then they will take the executive council. They will debate it. Then they will call the organized private sector, 
Manufacturing Association, NASIMA, all these other agencies. Then they will now go to other people. That's how you run the policy. We change money. We look at the one that will change under the one. Even musicians were thinking about it, the color of the money, what it looks like, the benefit of it. So it, it, that's how you do it. So that one is not the policy. Second, they didn't, the only uh, benefit that came out of it could have been accidental benefit, which is that for politicians who used to buy votes with 10,000, they could buy votes with 500, so it saved them cost, maybe. Uh, for people who people disturb you to give them money everywhere you go, you can always say, well, back with the, in the no money. So that's the only benefit you can say about it. But if you look at macroeconomic benefit, there isn't any because it has shrunk. If you look at farming communities, in my own uh, investigation, they were selling their rice paddy less than the cost of buying the rice. So statistically, you can say the price of rice has come down. But you are going to pay the, the price at the exit gate because, the, the, like when I went to uh, 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 Doma, Doma is a place where they have the highest venice They sent people to buy their venice there was no money and they couldn't, there was no silo. So they were selling them at um, prices that cash the whole economy for them. So if you are a consumer of Venice, you would say, oh, Venice price has come down. But you are going to pay the cost when you want to replant because they don't have. Even in many communities now, if you go to lower uh, Kebi, to upper Niger, to other places, if you go to Okeofu, they are having, this planting season is coming because it's beginning to rain. You will see that they've been advising farmers the first rain has come, don't plant yet. Very soon, we have to start planting. Now they don't have the farm input. They don't have money to buy the input of farm. So you will see that you have problem later. That's why I'm saying for economy, you have short term, medium term, long term. And none of this will have escaped a policy document. You will have seen it inside. The medium term effect, the short term effect, medium term effect, and long term effect of this currency swap. And the trauma that goes with it. And we did that the same thing in 1984. People were taking their old money to the banks and say, give me new, new money at 50% discount. So many bank managers became rich by asking you to bring your old one million naira and they'll give 500,000 uh, new money. All sorts of uh, arbitrage and irregularities like that. The same thing is happening in many sectors. So what I'm pleading with the new government is take a good look at it. Don't try to react to it in a knee jack way. Sit down, work out, look at the algorithm, take all the information coming in. I've been studying data for Bureau of Statistics on it. Uh, I take snippets of data, and for that analysis, I see that we are we should prepare to inject about 20 trillion into the economy by various ways by which we can do it, so that we can even out and not have depression. Otherwise, people will start losing their job and they will not know that it's related to this exercise. So I can't say that there's a benefit. If I'm driving my car, and I have an accident and I break my leg. The benefit is that maybe I have a cast on my leg and I stay with my wife and watch TV more. But that's not a very good benefit. So everything that happens to somebody, there will be some benefit somehow, but that's not the kind of benefit that's sustainable. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution to this conversation and all important one for that matter. Uh, so far, we've been speaking with uh, Adiwali Adibayo, the presidential a candidate of the Social Democratic Party. It's been an absolute pleasure to get your opinion on this issue. Thank you very much, Adiwali Adibayo. God bless Nigeria. Thank you for that, Adiwali.